Patapsco State Park. We have arrived. Site 428. It's actually 28 in the loop. Um, oh, there's a 430 up there, right up there. So, but there's a, a street running right through here. I think you come in over there. Maybe uh, maybe over a little further. But uh, quite a few trees. So I'm glad I didn't need solar. This is electric only, no water or sewer. There is a dump, and I think there's a, a water place too where you can get water. So we made it in very easily. It's a nice level spot, real good. Um, I did have to go up just one, one length, one over there, just to get it up a little bit and uh, to be perfectly level. I mean, I could have gone without it, but uh, hey, this is gonna work. We're on the end. Uh, around this corner over here are the restrooms and uh, washrooms, so and showers. We'll uh, check this all out for you and let you know what it comes out, but uh, I like this pretty good. Now you can hear the city in the background. There's an interstate or I mean, everything's an interstate around here. It's absolutely wall-to-wall -wall cars, it seemed to me, uh, coming here from uh, Blackwater Falls State Park. Although it was an easy drive, it's just nuts with trucks and cars. So I got a feeling closer we get to Baltimore and uh, New England, it's just going to be a matter-of-fact craziness that you try to get out of just like us. I thought I'd uh, do a little walk around here while the weather is nice and there was a bunch of chainsaws going over there a while ago. Really crazy. Uh, might not have been the traffic so bad. I can still hear the traffic back there but uh, anyway not too bad. So here's the first site right there. And that's a nice big back end and uh, the one thing I do like about this is it is shaded and uh, if you're relying on solar, of course, that's not a good deal. But uh, there's electric cookups on all of these. So that's a nice long back end. Site 2 and Site 3 up there seems really good, too. So let me walk around a little bit here and see if we can find any bad ones, okay? Something just a little confusing. This says electric sites uh, 405. Oh, yeah, I did turn in there, I guess. Yeah. Electric sites 405 through 429 because we're in 428. Non-electric sites are this way. And over there are the uh, dumpsters. And good, I see one of them is a recycle. I've been looking for one of those since uh, Colorado. So the dump station is this way in the bathhouse. So we'll go out and check the bathhouse out too. Hmm. 405. I thought this were electric. Oh, there is electric there, but this is just a little shorty, so be careful on that one. That's right up here by the bathhouse. Um, 410 there's got a nice little backup getting up in there. That's a pretty steep little incline, but if you've got a shorter unit, you can get up in there, unhitch, probably. I, I really wouldn't recommend it because you're so downhill here. Uh, I'd do vans or uh, camper uh, camper trucks maybe up there. That's about the only one I've seen. The other's been nice and long and deep. There was somebody in the bathroom taking a sweet time. He was reading the New York Times, I guess. So we'll check that out in a bit. 414 right there's a, a nice deep back end, but boy, this guy's clear down to his nub in front. So there must be a, a slope worse than what I can see. I guess I wasn't looking when we came in here because here's the firewood and uh, there's the dump station over there and then the camp host is over here. So I didn't even see this when I came by and the bathhouse is right up there too. So maybe that's the camp host. Okay, well, guy's finally gone. So there's two stalls down there. Hey, they have mirrors. And uh, this state park definitely is not as clean or as nice as uh, the last one. But, hey, 
what can you say? Lots of cobwebs. They haven't cleaned out in here in a while. Uh, two shower stalls. They do. There's one with a, a bench for ADA. So, uh, yeah. Well, what can I say? Clean floor needs a good paint job, but then uh, maybe Maryland isn't quite as hip on their campsites as most others. There's a host camper. Those things are pretty dang sweet, but you need a heck of a truck, duly, to drive those things. Just as an aside, on these, uh, that's a Serenity Class B Plus and very expensive, but he's been draining his tanks with a macerator for, I bet, 10, 12 minutes now. Anybody out, you'd have had two campers come through in the same amount of time, so that, it's a mess. And the other thought is, if that macerator ever goes bad, I wonder if there's a bypass on it, because you would be up a creek without a paddle. Um, yeah, 426 has got a big uphill. Like this guy had a right van, that's what you're going to need because otherwise you're way down. That wouldn't hold more than a 15 foot van. And then you're downhill. So we finally got some neighbors. Uh, Casita. Hey, little guy. Love those. Like to try it, but not with the wife. Uh, no hard feelings, hon. But I got a feeling that's a little cramped for two people. Anyway, that is not the host. Hmm. They've got a little amphitheater down here. Not sure if they use it anymore. Um, it seems like after COVID hit, uh, a lot of the ranger themed um, structures just went away and they didn't reinstate them. So this is just off the turn up there to go into the electrics. There's the recycle bins and then on down to the tent site only. Get these uh, tent sites are pretty pretty nice. Uh, there's a lady set up just right over there. And she's got a nice little setup over there. So you back your car right up in here and you've got a big area. These are nice and level and this is the outer loop, tent site only. Looks like they're doing a lot of tree trimming around here. Yeah, pretty much what I'm finding on these uh, outer loops is there's a rather steep drop off or rather steep incline up on these. I think these are made more for tents, camper vans. Uh, the ones that I showed you earlier, there were a couple of good ones that would be okay for a, a trailer. Um, but most of the outer loop, I think, probably leave that to the campers, camper vans, uh, not campers, tent campers, vans, and that kind of stuff. See, this drops off pretty good. But the, uh, the area, the pad, is really nice and level. They're really good. Give Fadley's a try here. Supposedly have good crab cakes. Alrighty, I got uh, clam strips, fries, and carrot salad. Linda got lump crab and macaroni and cheese and a cucumber salad. Looks awesome. We're in old Ellicott City, and this is uh, quite a historic place even way back into the 1800s. This is a Howard House 
It's apartments now, but it used to be a hotel, and it was quite the deal. He had the uh, the railings put up, the owner, about uh, a few years ago, and it cost him well over a hundred thousand dollars just to put those railings up. But uh, this is a really nice historic city, so we're taking a walk down through here, even though we've got some rain to take into consideration. The uh, whole uh, street, the uh, main street here is really only about two to three blocks long. You can easily walk it. There's shops all over along the side. Really interesting ones. A lot of uh, jewelry and uh, gift stores, things like that. Very cool, but the architecture around here is really nice. They've been able to keep a lot of the architecture. And uh, this is only about 10 miles, uh, I'm sorry, about 10 minutes from the campground. We're inside the uh, uh, Railroad Museum, um, the B&O, Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. And this is uh, very interesting. It's down at the end of town. So when you come through, you'll want to uh, go through the library. It's a free museum. Very interesting. And if you're into collecting plates, antiques, that kind of stuff, you want to watch for some of these because these are probably very expensive now. And these were used as uh, food service on the train and was considered one of the best, uh, finest personal service. It was really quite the deal. So this is, uh, it's two stories. Very interesting. We love this stuff. You got to get down here. I'm going to uh, pan this just a little bit so you can read this it's called the car house and uh, it was this is the last remaining one to be known in the world and uh, they would pull in the uh, cars train cars or even the locomotives themselves into this room uh, they would pull in over here until they finally got so big they couldn't get them in and then there's holes in the ceiling to let the steam out uh, as they came in to work on the engines in here. So this is just incredible. This is the last known uh, car house in the world. Here's the outside of the uh, car house. Uh, they just rolled right on in for servicing and then uh, came back out this way. There was a circular track here that was built to turn uh, the engines around until finally they got so big they couldn't do it. So this is definitely worth coming to see guys. It's free. Here's the uh, replica of the Baltimore to Ellicott City. The first 13 miles of railroad. All the stations that they went through. How neat. Now this uh, goes up to what used to be the second floor where the uh, everyone would board the train and a little stone down here. Well, not too little. It says 10M2B, which is 10 miles to Baltimore. And most people don't even know it's there. That was placed there between 1804 and 1806.